Are you ready? Yeah. Careful, Julian. Don't be making any funny noises. <laughs> right, so what we're looking at is finding the specific terms. So we're looking at question one. <coughs> and there's a range of questions here on exercise 6A. But let's have a look at the first couple and then I can let you go on. So it says, you've got to find the x to the 5 power term in the expansion of x minus 4 to the power of 7. Okay. So you can see how we're not asked to do the entire expansion because to the power of 7 would be a long expansion. Uh, lots of parts <coughs> to it, but we have to find just <coughs> the term that will have x to the power of 5 in it. All right. So... That involves a couple of things. That involves knowing the full term and knowing how to work out the coefficient. So, this one's quite simple. Right. Um, so the x to the 5 power term will be, well if we expand this we know we're going to have x to the power of 5 times what will be the main term? Minus 4 to the power of? 2. two. Okay, so that's the, remember, if we have a plus b to the power of n, we end up with a to the power of n and b to the power of so n minus 1 and, and so on, yeah. Okay, b to the power of 1. So we've got that bit of it sorted. So that's the a, b bit. Um, but the coefficient, we need to know the notation for the coefficient. So what will the coefficient notation be? I'll give you a clue. The top bit's 7. 7 and, so, this is way, it's very easy once you've got your head around it. So if we think about it, if we expand this, it would, the first term would be 7, 0, x to the power of 7, so, then it would be 7, 1, x to the power of 6, minus 4 to the power of 1, and so on. The next one would be 7, 2, x to the power of 5, five. yeah, minus 4 to the power of 2. So we know, actually, this number here could be one of two possible options. What could it be? Well, we found out it could be a 2, because that gives the x to the power of 5. Or it could be the 5, because remember the sy uh, symmetry of Pascal's triangle. So really, this number can just be the same as this one, or this one. So actually, it's, initially it looks like, oh, how am I going to know that? But quite simple, really. Just take it to that first power. So, now we've got to be able to work. Got any question? No, just repeat. You said that that number was the number of what and what? So this number, this number here yeah. is always the total power for the yeah. whole expansion. Okay. This number here can be one of two numbers. Mm -hmm. You end up with the same answer if you do that one or that one. Mm -hmm. Either way. If I do the expansion like this, you'll notice how 7, 2 will give me the x to the power of 5, but 7, 5 will also give me the same answer. So what we'll do as a bit of practice is work this out without using your calculator. So we'll, first of all we'll do 7 to x to the power of 5 times, well minus 4 times 16, so we've got that at the moment. So minus 4 to the power of 2 is 16. Okay, who remembers how I'm going to work out 7 choose 2 is called in that video? So the formula? 7 factorial. 7 factorial. Over all over. 2 factorial. 2 factorial. 7 minus 2 factorial. Times 7 <coughs> minus 2 <coughs> factorial. So that is 7 factorial over 2 factorial times <coughs> 5 factorial. And we've got to start doing some simplification. So, what if I do 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial? What am I left with? 
Six and seven is left over. Okay. Is everyone okay with why it's six times seven? Or would you like some explanation? No? Okay. So seven times six times five times four divided by five times will leave me with just seven times the six still over, to, well two factorial is just two, so that is seven times three which is 21. So that can come back over here which is 21 times 16 times x to the power of 5. So what's 21 times 16? You can use your calculator for that. Pardon? 336. X to the power of 5. So that is the term. That's the term of the expansion. So 7 over 2x power 5 times 16 is the 336 term? No, that's the coefficient, oh. 336. Okay. <laughs> that's the number. So 7 choose 2 is 21. Okay. Well, now we evaluate that using the formula. Okay? okay. Make sense? Yes. All right. From that station, I'll let you carry on with the first two. So question two and three. If you can do <coughs> questions two and three, and then we'll come back to talk about four together. Okay? Okay, so when we've got this, we are looking for the term, the y to the power of four term. Now, it's important that you realise it's not the fact that the term is only y to the power of four. It's the term that has y to the power of four as part of it, as a factor of it. So there'll be more than just y to the power of 4 there. Now, remember, in an expansion, a plus b to the power of 5, in this case, you look at the two bits, a and b, and they end up getting multiplied. So the first term would be a to the power of 5, but then we end up with a to the power of 4 times b to the power of 1 then it would be a to the power of 3 times b to the power of 2. So it's important that we figure out what a and b are. So in this case, a will be 4y and b will be minus 1. <coughs> so it's important we do that, because otherwise you'll do what you were doing, which was having just y to the power of 4. So we know that y to the power of 4 means this bit to the power of 4, so we have 4y to the power of 4, but then that gets multiplied by minus 1 to the power of 1. Okay. What you were all doing was forgetting that that is all to the power of 4 and not just y to the power of 4. But it will end up giving us y to the power of 4. <coughs> and what is the notation for the coefficient? Will be. 5 over 4 or 1. 5 over 4 or 5 over 1. Okay, I'm just going to take 5 over 1. Okay. Now I've got to multiply these out. So I'm just going to leave 5 over 1 to start with. Then it's times 4 to the power of 4, y to the power of 4, times minus 1. What is 4 to the power of 4? 256. 256 y to the power of 4, it's a minus, so then we've just got to evaluate 5, 1. So, 5 choose 1 is 5 factorial over 1 factorial times 4 factorial. So this is really easy then, isn't it? Because 5 factorial divided by 4 factorial is just 5, so that's nice. So we end up with 5 times minus 256 y to the power of 4. So 5 times 256 is that really big number you were talking about, which is? 1,280. 1,280. Yeah. And y? y to the power of 4. Okay. So that's the 
That's the term. The coefficient is the minus 1,280. Now, I do believe you're going to start having problems with the next one. I've already been asked, so let's have a look at it now. Um, we've got 2a minus 3b all raised to the power of 6. Um, so that means a is 2a and b is minus 3b. Okay, so we'll separate that off first. We are being asked to find the a squared b to the power of 4 term. So that means we are going to have 2a. Well, 2a needs to end up being squared. That's the only way of getting a squared. Therefore, minus 3b needs to be to the power of 4. four. And the notation for the coefficient will be? Six over, Six over four, or two. four or two, yeah. Either one will do. Same things here then. Make sure the powers apply to the numbers and the letters. And I'll let you carry on try and solve that. You want to, to solve it, then? Yeah. The next thing, so we've got the answer to this one. Let's have a look at what it calls the constant term. Now it likes this one in exams. Okay. Now a constant, a constant is when there is no variable. Okay. So how in an expression do you get a variable? Yeah, when you've got an x or an a or a g, that's a variable because that varies depending on what value you put in. So when we say no variable, that means basically you only have a number. All right? And if you only have a number, what that means in the expression, you'll be cancelling out all the x's in some way or the x will become um, not important to the expression. Right, so it will always be 1, for instance, and you end up with whatever it is. Now, can you think of any situations where a variable might always have a value of 1, whether it's x is 8 or x is whatever? So can you think? x to the power of 0. Yeah, so if we have x to the power of 0, you need to remember that x to the power of 0 is always 1. And there's also, okay, this might not be quite so obvious, is when you have something like x times 1 over x. Well, if you end up with that, you also end up with an answer of 1, regardless of what x is. So when we're asked to find a constant term, that's what we're, asked to, what we're looking for. Okay. So if we um, have a look at question 4 now, it says find the constant term in the expansion x minus 2 to the power of 9. Right. So this one's quite obvious. It's not this case, therefore it must be this case. Right. So that means we must have x to the power of 0 multiplied by minus 2 to the power of 9. And what's the coefficient? Nine, Nine. Zero. zero. So that this is the easiest one to work out because nine over zero is obviously just nine. Zero. Divide by zero. It's one. Nine division, isn't it? What is it? It's not zero. Think of Pascal's triangle. Oh, it's one. It's one, one. isn't it? The ends are always one. <coughs> Remember, it's one, 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 <coughs> one, two, one. This is the three. Zero here. Okay. Well, no, sorry, that's two zero. Okay. And then one, three, three, one, that there is three zero, and so on. Okay. This end is three, three. This end is two, two. So when you've got a zero or the number's the same, you end up with a one. So we've now got one times x to the power of 0 is 1 
minus 2 to the power of 9 then is minus 500 minus what? 512 512 that it? and that's it, there's no x's involved because it got dis got cancelled down to a 1 so that is the constant <coughs> term, so it doesn't matter what value of x you put into the expansion you will always end up with 512 for that particular term minus 512 Okay. So, 